Welcome to Bible Logos, the broadcast featuring the teaching ministry of Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire. This is Denise Deleuze and I'm your broadcast host. Today I'm excited to introduce a new series of teaching to you called Taking It to a Whole Nother Level. In continuation of his teachings about the Holy Spirit, here the pastor is talking about being born of the Spirit versus being baptized in the Spirit. We know that when we're born again, the Holy Spirit came and took residence within us. However, in today's message, the pastor points out that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit differs from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's taking it to a whole nother level. So let's get right into the Word. Here we go with the message, born of the Spirit versus baptized in the Spirit. I'm going to start a new series today that's called Taking It to a Whole Nother Level. Taking It to a Whole Nother Level. And for this uh, introductory sermon, I'm going to go to the Gospel according to St. John. And I'll start there at the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3. And I'm going to start reading at verse 1. So would you mind standing to your feet with me all over the house? And let's start at verse 1 of the Gospel according to St. John and chapter 3. It reads as follows. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him in a way that had nothing to do with what Nicodemus had just said. Jesus answered him saying, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus thought to himself, what does that have to do with what I just said to you? But he said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not marvel that i said to you you must be born again so for this introductory message i'm going to go from the topic born of the spirit Versus baptized in the spirit. Born in the spirit versus baptized in the spirit. Before you take your seats, just hug one or two people and say, I'm just checking on whether you're born again. <laughs> just doing a spirit check up in here. on a spirit check. I want to talk about being born of the spirit versus being baptized in the spirit. And to start off, I'm going to ask the question, what does it mean to be born of the spirit? What does it mean to be born of the spirit? We just read over in John chapter 3 where Jesus throws out some words about somebody being born again and being born of the spirit and of water and all this other kind of stuff. And he's speaking to Nicodemus who had never heard any such talk before in his life, had absolutely no idea what Jesus was talking about. Uh, for us, we are familiar with these terms. We, many of us grew up in church and, you know, all our life 
we learned and heard about this stuff about being born again and being saved and so on and so forth. So for us, it's second nature. But if you can just put yourself in Nicodemus' shoes and being the first time uh, that you ever heard such words before and the, the first time in the Bible that such is mentioned, it's kind of confusing and mind-boggling, which is the reason Nicodemus responded with the question is, what you talking about, Jesus? How is it that somebody can enter back into his mother's womb and, and be born a second time? But Jesus is using this terminology, which is unfamiliar, saying you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit. So what does it mean to be born of the Spirit? Well, when we look at this passage of Scripture, we see that he uses uh, the terminology born again. Jesus answered and said to him in verse 3, unless one is born again. And then he says in verse 5, I say to you truly, truly, unless one is born of water and the spirit. In both cases, he said, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So born of the spirit must be the equivalent of being born again. Jesus also said in that same passage of scripture something about born, not only born again, but when you study what that born again means, it also means born from above. So then this topic of born of the spirit must also mean born again and must also mean born from above. And then for those of us who are familiarized with the revelation that was given to the Apostle Paul over in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and we read this pretty much daily during our uh, intercessory prayer hour, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that gives us another tie-in. So then to be born of the Spirit is not only equal to being born again, is not only the equivalent of being born above, born from above, but it also means to be saved. So what Jesus is talking about here is you got to be saved. Now what's interesting to me is that one day, I remember it was a long time ago, I ran into someone, bless her heart, she was Catholic, and you know, she said she was a Christian, but she didn't say, she didn't believe she was born again. She said she was a Christian. She said she was saved. But she said, born again, that's something that you born again believers talk about. And that's the way she addressed me. She said, you, you, you guys, you born again believer. You're a born again believer, right? Not understanding and not knowing that they're the same thing. So she called herself saved, didn't recognize that she's born again. If you're saved, you're born again. If you're born again, you're saved. If you're born again, you were born of the Spirit. If you were born of the Spirit, you were born from above. Jesus said, the point that I want to make to you is that if it's of the flesh, it's of the flesh. But if it's of the Spirit, it's got to be of the Spirit. And whichever way you want to look at it, you must be born again if you want to see God. How many people want to see God one day? Then you've got to be born again. So to be born again means to be, or to be born of the Spirit means to be born again. It means to be born from above. It means to be saved. So let's look at what it means to be baptized in the Spirit. Because then the question is, are they one and the same? Is it the same thing to be born of the Spirit? Is that the same thing as being baptized in the Spirit? Well, let's look at this. First and foremost, let's talk about the word baptism. What does the word baptism mean? Anybody? Throw some responses to me. What does the word baptism mean? When you put your head in the water. What does baptism mean? To be immersed. Immersed. Some people think baptism, and some people are taught that baptism is this. This is sprinkle. 
What I just did, that's sprinkle. That's not baptized. That's sprinkle. The word baptism itself means that you are immersed under water. That's the whole you. That doesn't mean that you just get wet. Mother looking at me like, if you put some, if you sprinkle that water on me, I'm coming up out of this. <laughs> You're going to really see if I'm born again if you put that water on me. <laughs> the word baptism, it means immersion. It means submergence, like a submarine. What's the difference between a submarine and other vessels of water? Submarines go all the way under. Most other vessels float on top of the water, but submarines go all the way underwater. That's what it means to be baptized. So baptism in the Holy Spirit is an immersion or an infusion of God's spirit. So when we talk about the difference between being born of the spirit and being baptized in the spirit, we first look at the words. So when he talks about baptism, now, I have here a whole lot of water. I have a whole lot of water. And I have a picture. I'm gonna, come help me, bro. Come help me out over here. Here is an empty glass, and here is a glass that was empty that now contains water. So here is a glass that was formerly empty that now contains water. Though this glass contains water, the question that I want to ask is this. Was this glass baptized in water? Why wasn't it? It wasn't submerged. So there is water in this glass, but the glass was not baptized in the water. You follow me? Though there is water in the glass, the glass was not baptized in the water. Let's go further. Come on, Vernell White. Oh. Well, not Vernell. I guess I better say something different. No, 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 no. Verdell White. Okay, I was, I was say <laughs> now, those of you who are able to see this will see now that the glass is in the water. And not only is the glass in the water, the glass has been completely submerged in the water. So now when I bring this glass up out of the water, what's the difference between what you see now in terms of this glass and what occurred with this glass than what you saw formerly? What difference? Did, what, what's the difference? Okay, you're saying it's full, but what else? It's been submerged because even though you, some of you said it's full, well, is it full now? Okay, but was it submerged? So even though it is not necessarily full, it was submerged. What caused it to be submerged? The fact that it was dunked, dipped, submerged, immersed, or whatever other way you want to describe it, in the water. It went all the way down and came all the way up. That's baptism. So when we do water baptism, for example, thank you, Verdell. When we do water baptism, we, sum we submerge the person all the way down in the water and bring the person all the way up out of the water. We don't sprinkle because we understand that baptism requires an immersement, an immersion, a submergence. Well, baptism is baptism here too. And we understand that when we are born again, the Spirit of God comes to dwell on the inside of us. 
just like in this illustration here, there is water inside the glass. Let me use the second glass. Come back, Vernell. <laughs> now for the second glass, I'm going to pour some water in here. Now, Verdell, I'm going to ask you to hold both of these cups. All right. Now, this is the one that I just poured water in. Right? Yes. This is the cup that we submerged in the water. This one has water in it, but was it baptized? No. This one has water in it, but was it baptized? And what makes the difference between the two? The second was submerged. Thank you for Verdell. Come on, thank God with me for Verdell White. So today I want to talk about being born of the Spirit as contrasted with being baptized in the Spirit. Number one, to be born of the Spirit is synonymous with the new birth. When we talk about being born of the Spirit, that is synonymous with the new birth. That is synonymous with being born again. Jesus asked the question, or actually explained to Nicodemus, that unless a person is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's synonymous with salvation. Those are how many saved folk we have in here today who love Jesus. And we got a lot of saved folk in here. So we are born again. We are saved. We are born of the Spirit. That's all the same thing. However, in the Bible, when we see the, the, the terminology baptized in the Spirit, when that's addressed in the Bible, it's sometimes used interchangeably and some of you threw this out a little bit earlier when I, when I did the illustration with the water of being filled with the Spirit, okay? Some of you said, well, it, that, the difference between the two was that one of the cups was filled with water. But you can be filled with the Spirit. Let me go back first. You can be filled with the water without having been baptized in the water. Right? Do we need to illustrate that? Some of you said yes. Come on, Verdell. All right. This is the second glass that we did not dip in the water. And right now, it's a little more than halfway full of water, correct? Now, now, hold that up a little bit higher for me, Verdell. That glass now is full of water. But was it baptized no. in water? So you could be it could be filled and not have been baptized. Likewise, with respect to the Holy Spirit, when we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us in varying measures. In varying measures. Just like that glass was initially half full and now it's all the way full. The Holy Spirit dwells within every believer, but in varying measures. Some people have more Holy Spirit dwelling within them than other people do. But, but that is not necessarily being baptized in spirit. Because in order to be baptized, there has to be an immersion, a submergence, right? Now, over in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, the scripture says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the first point that we're making here is this. Uh, being born of the Spirit is synonymous with the new birth, is synonymous with being born again, is synonymous with being saved. However, being baptized in the Spirit may or may not be synonymous with being filled. Because when you're baptized, you can be filled, but you can also be filled without being baptized. Do you see that? Yeah. Number two, with respect to being born of the Spirit, when you are born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit baptizes the believer 
into the body of Christ. Number two, the Holy Spirit baptizes the believer into the body of Christ. But with respect to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I'm getting ready to show you the scripture that says that Jesus baptizes the believer in the Holy Ghost or in the Holy Spirit. Look at the difference here. With respect to being born of the Spirit, the scriptures we're going to read is going to show us that the Holy Spirit baptizes the believer into the body of Christ. But with respect to the baptism in the Spirit, we're going to see that Jesus baptizes the believer in the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the scripture over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. You see it there? By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. No matter who you are, no matter where you came from, no matter what your background was, if you're born again, if you love Jesus, if you're saved, we were all baptized into one body by one spirit. You see that? But now let's look at the business about baptism in the Holy Spirit. About baptism, I'm sorry, in the Holy Spirit. Over in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible says, and this is John the Baptist talking. Okay, remember John the Baptist? He was the one who, 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 who proclaimed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He announced his coming, right? Look what he says here. He says in verse 11, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Look what he says here. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. See that? So what we find from the scripture is that the Holy Spirit baptizes the believer into the body of Christ. However, we see from scripture that Jesus baptizes the believer with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at somebody and say, they're not the same. Amen. Let me give you the third point. Point number three, when we make the case about being born of the Spirit versus being baptized in the Spirit, point number three is this. Being born of the Spirit is the experience of every believer Upon being saved. The third point is that being born of the Spirit, this is the experience of every, say every. every. The experience of every believer upon being saved. Once you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, some of you did it at home, some of you did it at church, some of you did it in your car, some of you did it in your shower. Wherever you were when you did it, however it was that you did it, when that occurred, you were baptized by the Spirit of God into the body of Christ, and that's every believer. Okay. If you are a believer, you were born of the Spirit. However, when we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, this experience is available to every believer, but it's not necessarily experienced by every believer. Being born of the Spirit is the experience of every believer upon being saved. However, being baptized in the Spirit, even though it is available to every believer, it is not necessarily experienced by every believer. I'm going to let that resonate for a minute. Because I ain't looking at nobody. But I've got saved people in here today who know that they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. You've got the Holy Spirit living in you. You're saved. You love Jesus. But you know you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. I heard about um, one uh-huh and two all right. (laughs) 
Let's look at the, what the scripture says. Over in John chapter 3, verse 5, when we talk about being born of the Spirit, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How many say what we have in here? That means you were born of water and the Spirit. See it? That's, that's the evidence right there. But now we're over it with respect to the case for baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 39. He says, the promise is for you. Now, this is Peter talking. This was the day that the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell and Peter preaches the message. And he says that the promise is for you. Those of you who are here listening to me teach this, Peter's talking. And for your children and for all. See that all? Point to yourself and say, all includes me. The promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. How many saved folk we have in here? That means you've been called to him. That means you've been called to him. However, just because you are born of the Spirit, just because you're saved, just because you love Jesus, just because you got the Spirit of God living in you, that does not necessarily mean that you've been baptized in the Spirit. Just like we saw some of this water, which was, one of these cups was filled with water, one of these cups was dunked in water. Both of them contained water, but the experience was different. All right? Over in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7, what am I talking about here? The fact that with respect to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, this is available to every believer, but it's not necessarily experienced by every believer. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7 say this. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. Who did he find? Disciples. Some disciples. Disciples are believers, right? Disciples are followers, right? Yes. So he found some folk who were saved. Let's look at what it goes on to say. Verse 2 says, And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, No. We haven't even heard of this, such a thing as the Holy Spirit. We don't know what that is. They said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Look at verse 3. And he said, into what then were you baptized? See what he said there? Into what then were you baptized? They're thinking he's talking about water. So they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was come after him. That is Jesus. Verse 5, upon hearing this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. But now look at verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Verse 7 says, there were about 12 men in all. So what are we talking about here? Even though the baptism in the Holy Spirit is available to every believer, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not necessarily experienced by every believer. Here we saw there were believers, there were disciples, there were followers of Christ who even though they were saved, they hadn't been taught anything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if we don't hear, we don't know. How shall they hear except they have a preacher? Thank God for a preacher. Come on and put your hands together for a preacher. Number four, born of the Spirit. Number four, versus baptism in the Spirit. The fourth point I want to make is this. With respect to being born of the Spirit, this is experienced by transformation. This is experienced, or I'm sorry, evidence. This is evidenced by a transformation that occurs in your life. This is evidenced by a metamorphosis into a new creature. 
How many new creatures do we have in here today? Hallelujah. When you were born again, you became a new creature. However, with respect to the baptism in the spirit, this, is a, this one is evidenced by speaking in other tongues. With respect to being born of the spirit, the evidence is the transformation that occurred in your life into a new creature. However, with respect to the baptism in the spirit, the evidence is speaking in other tongues. Let's look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. How many new creations do we have in here today? Come on and put your hands together if you're a new creation. He says, The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. But now let's look at the scripture references for being baptized in the Spirit. Over in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 47, the Bible says, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter, talking about people who were Jewish. At that time, it was only Jewish people who, were, who had been converted to Christianity. They were amazed. Why? Because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. How, they, look what it says here. They were amazed. Why? Because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. So how did they know that the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles? Because they heard them speak with other tongues. So the evidence of your transformation, the evidence, I'm sorry, of that you're born again is your transformation. The evidence that you are born again is the fact that you've been made a new creation. However, the evidence of your baptism in the Holy Spirit is that you speak with other tongues. Let's go on. Verse 46 in that same passage of Scripture, verse chapter 10, says this. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues. See that? For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. So then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So the way that God showed Peter and the way that God showed the Jews that God is now open to all believers, the evidence of that was when they saw them speak with other tongues. Acts chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 and verse 6 read as follows. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now notice, we saw this once before. And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And so verse 6 says, And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking with other tongues and prophesying. So again, the evidence that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit was that they spoke with tongues. I know it's quiet in here. I know it's quiet in here, but I'm going to make this case today in the name of Jesus. And if I don't finish it today, I'm going to pick it up next week. But I'm going to make this case. There is a difference between being born of the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit. Just like there is a difference between being filled with a cup of water and being baptized with a cup of water. So somebody come on and put your hands together and let's give God some praise. Number five. With respect to being born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit does dwell within every born again believer. The Holy Spirit does dwell within every born again believer. If you're saved, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. However, with respect to being baptized in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in that case not only indwells us, but infuses us. Not only indwells us, but infuses us. All right, let's look at the evidence for the scripture for born of the spirit. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, What do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? 
You are not your own. He lives in you. But with respect to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does not just indwell us but infuses us. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. What does that mean? If you, for example, of a good illustration of being infused would be a sponge. If we had a sponge up here and we took a sponge and dipped it down in that pail of water, what would happen to that sponge? Water would be inside the sponge. Water would be outside the sponge. Water would be throughout the sponge. Why? Because the sponge will have been infused with water. When the Holy Spirit baptizes us, it not only stays within us, it comes out of us. Come on and put your hands together, somebody, and praise God. Then finally, number six, to be born of the Spirit, number six, is the gateway to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about being born of the Spirit, this is the gateway to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You all know what the fruit of the Holy Spirit is, right? All right, but when we talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's the gateway to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Being born of the Spirit is the gateway to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. However, being baptized in the Spirit is the gateway to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at the scripture references for this. Over in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, when we talk about being born of the Spirit, it says the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Some of us know we didn't have any of that before we got saved. Huh? Look at somebody say, thank God he saved me. Thank God he delivered me. Because when he saved me and delivered me, he brought his fruit. Hallelujah. He brought it. Why are you pointing to Ike? I, don't, I, don't, I didn't do that. They were over there pointing to Ike for some reason. However, the case for being baptized in the Spirit, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and verses 7 through 11, reading this time from the New American Standard Bible. It says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. See that? Yes. Varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Let's look at verse 7. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Verse 8 says, for to one is given the word of wisdom. How? Through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge, according to what? The same Spirit. To another, faith, special faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the effecting of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing or discerning of spirits. To another, various or diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Look at verse 11. But the one and the same Spirit works all these things in all. It's the Spirit of God and the baptism of the Spirit of God that looses the power of God and looses the gifts of God to operate within the believer's life. We've got to seek more. It's time to go after more. It's time to stop be lollygagging around with Jesus and lollygagging around with our Christianity and being ho-hum and ho-humdrum and all of that other mediocre stuff. It's time for us to get up and allow the power of God to work itself out within us. Jesus said there's some signs that's supposed to follow those who believe. We are supposed to have signs that follow us. We're supposed to work miracles in his name. He said the works that I do, you're going to do also. And greater than these will you do. But it takes the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand to your feet. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your mighty word. Today we learned that while the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the experience of every believer, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is available too, but not experienced by every believer. There is a difference between being born of the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit. I am Denise Deleuze and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word and therefore it is with whatever measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.
If these messages are a blessing to you, please write us and support us at Bible Logos, the broadcast, care of Faith Fellowship Community Church, 5937 Watt Avenue, North Highlands, California, 95660. Please enclose a generous donation to help us broadcast these messages on the air. For more of the ministry of Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire, you can join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. sharp for the ultimate worship experience. That's the Faith Fellowship Community Church located at 5937 Watt Avenue in the city of North Highlands, California. You can also find us online. Our web address is www.faithfellowshiplive.org. You can connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash faithfellowshiplive or you can download our mobile app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just enter Faith Fellowship Community Church in the search bar.